All right. So next up, uh, we're going to be chatting with Ed Lidnick from Premier Tech. Just a little bit about Ed. Um, Ed is the director of Sorry, Ed is the director of the Grower Services team at Premier Tech, and he's been a member at Premier Tech for over 30 years. He is truly an industry reference that growers can rely on, and his knowledge and passion are key in the development and refinement of all professional and retail ProMix products. So thanks so much for being here, Ed. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay there? We can. Okay, great. I'm just getting my... Uh some feedback to the uh, mic there um, just getting my uh, presentation set here and okay great um, good morning uh, to the west central and west coast uh, attendees uh, good afternoon to the east coast um, thank you everyone for attending sorry about the uh, little delay in getting set up here it's uh, the system's a little different than some of the other ones we've used so um, this presentation uh, it's about value-added combination of active ingredients fully integrated to growing media um, that's the key and um, what we want to do is just go over some of the uh, developments we've had with ProMix and explain uh, over the years uh, some of the, the, uh, the change in our products and how we uh, developed those to where they are today. Um, you go back a second. I am um, I'm responsible for the grower services, uh, the grower services director for, for Premier Tech uh, for uh, our horticulture division. Um, we have a team of people that also work in our grower services uh, department uh, that work in the, uh, throughout North America. Um, as, as well as the sales team, as you may also know, we have sales, of course. Um, but we also uh, operate a full uh, research and development center uh, in Canada. It's a facility that's actually, uh, inception was back in 1980s. It was developed and started in 1984. And that's where uh, I'll go back to explain some of our development of products and how this came, came uh, to fruition from there. So as far as ProMix, um, you know, initially when you look at, at growing media, growing media is made of lots of different components. Could be, you know, peat moss has still been a staple for for many years for for growing media. But there's bark, there's you know, uh, there's core, there's there's wood fiber, there's all sorts of things which are typically the um, the organic uh, portion of growing media. But there's also the mineral components which could be perlite, vermiculite, uh, calcine clay. There's lots of different things. What's interesting is um, growing media always addressed, you know, the the physical uh, characteristics of for growing plants for air porosity and water holding capacity and, and that to to mimic some of like mineral soil uh, but it also you know we include uh, limestone for pH adjustment as well as um, you know fertilizer start a fertilizer to to initially get plants going so while it's much like um, mineral soil in some respects it's also very different than mineral soil so uh, and one of the things that make it much different than mineral soils the fact that um, it is something that's synthesized put together from all these different ingredients and the fact that it doesn't have a lot of uh, microorganisms um, present living inside that growing media so what we looked at is uh, over the years in developing the promix products uh, which have actually been on the market for more than 50 years uh, we started looking at different types of uh, organisms that we can include in there to enhance um, plant growth and in different re different respects. And this is something we call active ingredients. So in this presentation, what I'm saying is uh, bring plant roots to life. And that's really what this is all about because growing media, I said at one point, in, uh, you know, can uh, give all the aspects of, of soil from, you know, the, the physical and chemical characteristics, but um, we want to also address the uh, uh, biological end of it, that other component. So we say this value-added combination. So, and combined with that, we have something what we call Promix biofungicide and mycorrhizae. And just to go back for people that have used Promix over the years, the mycorrhizae, we actually um, started working on it over uh, 29 years ago. It was actually introduced more than 25 years ago in our, in our products. We later then um, introduced uh, biofungicide, which is actually a bacillus. That was introduced uh, over 20 years ago. And then with the last, you know, uh, over 11 years ago, we introduced a combination of the biofungicide and the mycorrhizae together. That sounds pretty simple that you take one plus one and you get the two that work together, but it doesn't always work that easily because you need these, these organisms to dance and work well together. So um, we also had to do some selection in, in the case of the biofungicide for bacillus to be sure that we had an isolate that would work very well with mycorrhizae. So what we have here is basically the products then enhance with the use, uh, enhance, protect, and suppress. And what I mean by that is the enhance enhances the use of the fertilizer in the water with the mycorrhizae to uh, in, 
to reduce the uh, resistance to stresses, improve um, plant strength and productivity, and optimize the plant growth rate and uniformity. It also protects the plant because the biofungicide reduces the incidence of plant root diseases. And specifically, we're listed with EPA for uh, suppression of fusarium, pythium, and rhizoctonia, and the risk of pathogens that develop resistance to certain uh, chemical fungicides. We know that a lot of these biologicals, one, one big plus of that is that you don't have resistance as you would with chemical uh, types of, of pesticides. Um, we also have suppress. In this case, uh, we recently, and I'll go in more detail about this, uh, certain insects, including fungus gnats and, and thrips, we are now listed with EPA for suppression of those in the growing media product. So next slide, the bacteria, just to go a little more um, explanation of what that is and how it works. We use a bac uh, bacteria, it's called Bacillus pumilus. It's a strain PTB 180. This is one that's an isolate that was uh, developed by Premier Tech Biotechnologies. Uh, it's a 180 strain. Um, what it does exactly is it suppresses fungal plant pathogen, uh, root pathogens and, and insects. Uh, specifically, we're listed for Pythium ultimum, Fusarium oxysporum, and uh, Rhizoctonia solani. We also are listed for insect pests, specifically labeled for suppression of fungus gnats and thrips. Um, the bacteria also does something else. It provides some root stimulation by increasing the root hairs and the branching of the roots. There's also a healthier, stronger root system, so there's better use of fertilizer and water, and there's an overall improved uh, plant growth. Now, how does it work exactly? The, the uh, bacteria uh, exclude works by exclusion, we call uh, niche exclusion or niche exclusion. It's basically whoever gets their root system first pushes the other ones away. So that's what we call exclusion. But there's also a lipopeptide uh, production by the, by the bacteria um, that actually suppresses, it almost works like an antibiotic and keeps the, the, uh, the pathogens at bay. So uh, the insect suppression works in a different mode. It's actually depleting the food source and there's some systemic acquired resistance for the plant. So the depleting the food source, we know that a lot of, of the fungus gnats will feed on, on some of these pathogen um, fungi I mentioned on the previous slide. So when you deplete that source, um, the fungus gnats are not attracted to lay their eggs on the growing media uh, when there's no food source. So we see less uh, instance of, of eggs being laid on, on top of the media and less, you know, uh, 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 the pupae inside the the uh, growing media. So um, in the case of the fung uh, fungus gnats, that's what we see. We also for thrips. Thrips actually have formed an N-star. We not we don't really know exactly why it occurs, but we know there's also a uh, reduction of uh, of thrips. Now remember that thrips don't feed in in growing media as we know of. Um, so, but we do know uh, from the research we've done that there is a um, uh, reduction of, of thrips as well. So uh, the biostimulation is also occurs from, from the bacteria. So there's some phytohormones that are secreted and that improves the overall growth of plants. So let's look at a couple uh, pictures here. We have the control, uh, some seedlings here on the left. Um, and you can see just their seeds are, are germinating on, on the uh, uh, Petri dish. And then in the uh, Petri dish on the right, um, this is the treated one with the Bacillus uh, pumilus, PTB 180. And you can see the roots are, if you look, there's the expanded view on, to the right there. There's some root stimulation. You see the roots are actually uh, more root hairs and a uh, little better growth overall. Mycorrhizae, <clears throat> as we had the, the previous uh, uh, presentation, uh, we'll go in a little more depth on, on the mycorrhizae and what we, we're producing exactly. So the uh, mycorrhizae that we have in our products is something called Glomus intraratices uh, PTB297. Again, Premier Tech Biotechnologies developed this specific isolate, uh, found this, uh, produced the 297. I should mention that both of the uh, the biofungicide and the mycorrhizae are, are not are non-GMO organisms. They're not um, uh, modified at all. They are um, basically have been isolated and then reproduced, uh, isolated from soils, from mineral soils, and then reproduced, and then we produce those in, in laboratory uh, conditions. So um, the mycorrhizae, what does it do exactly? It's a natural fungi or fungus that uh, colonizes the plant roots to extend and increase the total absorptive area for the plant. It improves acquisition uptake specifically of phosphorus, copper, manganese, and zinc, as well as water. So we know that it also reduces environmental stresses. It reduces transplant shock when we take a plant and put it into uh, planting outdoors. Uh, it improves the overall growth of plants. And this microorganism actually benefits the plants throughout the, the life cycle. A little bit different um, in the previous presentation, a lot of it, uh, the information was, was focused more towards mineral soil. This is a little bit different here because when we're talking about growing media, remember that growing media doesn't have a lot of microorganisms uh, present. So you're not in the competition like you would be in a mineral soil environment. 
So how does it work exactly? The mycorrhizae develop an uh, intra and extra root network of filaments that explore the soil, giving access to more nutrients, water, and transfer them to the, the plant. The mycorrhizae itself is an endomycorrhizae, um, we call arbuscular mycorrhizae. Uh, this is a close-up picture of it. You have uh, the large structure, the picture on the left has a larger structure vertically. That's the root system of the plant and the smaller structures that are highlighted with the, uh, the arrows are the hyphae. The hyphae are these small filaments that extend from the spores of the mycorrhizae and then uh, those, those hyphae, they penetrate into the root system of the plant. As I mentioned, this is an endomycorrhizae, which is endotrophic mycorrhizae. Endotrophic mycorrhizae penetrate into the root system, the cortex of the root, and actually set up house inside the cellular cell of, of the, uh, the plant root. Um, so it's at a cellular level. The uh, structures that we find with endomycorrhizae include hyphae, the spores, which are would be something analogous to like seeds and plants. The spores actually germinate and produce the the hyphae that that uh, you know extend out through the spores into the plant root system. And then once it's set up inside the root, if you look at the picture to the right, we have um, the arbuscules and the vesicles all along the extent of the the hyphae within the root system. Um, arbuscules are are inside the root system uh, cells. Uh, they set up in little structures and provide exchange sites for um, different nutrients, water, particularly phosphorus. And the vesicles uh, serve more as uh, storage organs um, for, for lipids uh, and carbohydrates from the mycorrhizae. So how does the symbiosis take place? Um, the mycorrhizal spores, they will germinate in the soil. They then produce the filaments, the hyphae, which I described, which then penetrate the root cells. The network of filaments then explore the soil and access more nutrients and water and transfer them to the plant. Um, as I explained, this is a, a equally benefit symbiosis for, for both the mycorrhizae and the plant. So the, the plant uh, is giving you know, sugars and carbohydrates to, to the, uh, the mycorrhizae. In turn, the mycorrhizae are then grabbing the water and the nutrients and giving it back to the plant. So they exchange and they benefit each other. This is why we call this a symbiosis. There are some differences in inoculum sources. Um, I just want to make people aware that there are uh, mycorrhizal inoculums and how they're produced are, are much different. Not all genuses and species have the same mycorrhizal effect. Uh, this was explained a little bit in the previous uh, uh, presentation. Um, what we produce is actually an aseptic viable spores, and these are preferred over propagules. And just explain the difference. Propagules can contain spores, but propagules are parts, pieces of mycorrhizae. Uh, propagules are often, um, can be collected from growing plants. As you see pictures in the bottom, they'll grow a host plant and the root systems then are chopped up. And then you'll get parts, pieces of mycorrhizae ranging from the hyphae, the vesicles, arbuscules, root pieces from the plant, and even spores. What we produce is actually the, the viable spores. We're actually growing these inside a laboratory. And this is some pictures up above of our facilities to the right there. Um, the facilities actually uh, will, will produce this, the mycorrhizae um, and do the spore counts for viable live spores. And those spores are incorporated into our products. The, the idea of the live spores, in fact, is that they are much, there's a much greater assurance that they're going to form association with plants. They're going to you know, germinate, um, unlike um, hyphae or vesicles or other pieces, um, they may never you know, form a mycorrhizal association. Just like if you take a plant and you, you chop up a plant, you have the seeds, you have the leaves, the stems and the roots. You could produce a plant and propagate from all of those, but the seeds are the ones that are most likely to germinate into a plant. Same thing for mycorrhizae, when you're using, you know, spores, viable spores, you know that these are going to really germinate into viable mycorrhizae. And that's really what we work for. Uh, to produce. And by producing it in the lab, we also don't run into a condition where when you're growing plants in greenhouses, it's very likely you could also be propagating pathogens. Um, when you chop up those roots, you may have mycorrhizae, but you could have some other things in there that you don't really want. Um, what we produce is an aseptic system. Uh, it's actually free of pathogens, so there's no risk of having the, uh, the bad guys present. So the inoculum sources, like I said, the fungal pieces are sold as propagules. It can include hyphae and non-viable spores, vesicles, uh, all these parts. The viable spores have the longest shelf life as well. And it's really designed to be the best rep reproductive structure. So, like I said, similar to seeds and plants, the spore walls help um, helps in, withstand harsh environmental conditions. It does not need uh, plant parts to exist, but 
uh, will need a live plant to complete its life cycle. So you can store it for a while and it's, it's viable. We know with storage conditions, how long we can keep these uh, in storage. Um, we often get this question, mycorrhizae, why we use one organism? Um, we, there's been a lot of research and, and the most research that's been done on, on Glomus and geratices, um, it offers the greatest benefits. It's a strong rapid colonizer. It stores best within growing media. And we know that we can store it up to two years for viability. Not that we want someone using growing media to, that's two years old, uh, because there's other things like wetting agent and other things that can actually uh, biodegrade over time. But we know that the mycorrhizae, we don't have a risk uh, of something that can store up to two years. It's also compatible with the Bacillus uh, pumilus, the PTB 180 biofungicide that we're including. Um, cocktails and combinations don't always work well. Um, for instance, some products will have ectomycorrhizae if you're growing greenhouse plants. You know, ecto is not going to really do much for you. If you're growing conifers and, you know, hardwood species, yeah, ectos are great, but then the endos probably aren't going to do much for you either. So we, our focus has really been on one organism for these reasons. Um, many endomycorrhizal uh, will colonize roots, but some uh, produce few to no benefits. Um, the research shows that multiple strains can all, will colonize plant roots. But sometimes you have competition even between those mycorrhizae. So weak or performing uh, or poor performing strains may colonize roots before the better strains do. But um, overall, the growth response can be reduced. Uh, we said on average about 42.2% is what we figured. But um, we know that with Glomus and teratoses, uh, this specific species we're producing, it's, it's a very uh, strong rapid colonizer and it works best for these applications for commercial greenhouses and nurseries. So there's something um, I want to mention is what we call a tripartite association. Um, what you have basically is you have um, the plant, uh, it's between the plant, the mycorrhizae, and the bacillus, the biofungicide. So the plant will give the carbohydrates to the fungi, the mycorrhizae, and the hyphae then explore the soil, the growing media, and exuding carbon. The bacteria then absorb this carbon and multiply along the hyphae. So the bacteria actually can grow along the, the hyphae of the mycorrhizae. So they work in partnership together. Then the bacteria liberate the, the lipopeptides and or hormones. And the bottom line is it all results in protected and stimulated plant growth. So here's a um, uh, microscopic picture. It's magnified. You can see the hyphae are the small structures um, the mycorrhizal, dead, dead in the middle of the screen, up of just a little bit, you'll see mycorrhizal hyphae uh, with bacillus growing around it. So the hyphae are those look like spider webs, and some of them have thicker gray coating on it. And then um, you have the inoculation point to the left, which is actually the, the root of, of the uh, plant. But the, the darker, thicker gray areas, it's actually the hyphae with the, um, the bacillus growing along that hyphae. So we see some other structures in there too as well. We'll see those, those uh, kind of tan looking little little balls. That's actually the mycorrhizal spores. And then we have some uh, mycorrhizae hyphae without the bacillus, which are the very fine filaments. So I just wanna show some of the demonstrations of the products. So here we have some uh, green pepper that was inoculated with fusarium. Um, so we see the untreated to the left and then the promix with the, the bio and the mycorrhizae together. We see after six weeks, um, the product with the both the active ingredients had a 37% greater shoot uh, fresh weight than the untreated product. So um, we see, you know, a lot of times when you see um, problems with nutrition or uh, plants may be challenged by pathogens, uh, it doesn't always display its ugly head right away. And a lot of times you'll see some delay growth. The benefit of having um, the the mycorrhizae and the biofungicide there is that the plant is no longer challenged uh, by something that could slow down its growth or let it later become a bigger problem. So um, that's why we see some of this, there's some growth stimulation, but also um, when you're challenged in this, in this case, uh, where the fusarium is being applied, you don't see uh, the plant, you know, dying immediately from it, but it's not growing as vigorous. And this is where the, uh, these active ingredients actually shine. Here's another, uh, uh, trial that we did with tomato, it's inoculated also with fusarium. So again, six weeks, um, we had 26% greater fresh, uh, uh, greater shoot fresh weight than the Promix untreated control. And as I mentioned earlier, um, we, we recently received um, approval from EPA for insect suppression. Um, so this is exclusive to the Promix biofungicide mycorrhizae product. Um, grow will benefit from the protection against the root diseases, but also for this, uh, um, 
this uh, cause body specific root pathogens, but also um, the insect suppression. So as I mentioned, it was approved by EPA and uh, I'll go into a little more detail. Showing the fungus gnats is just some at day 63, his begonias, and we can see the ones that are right um, on the yellow sticky cars, there's a lot less um, uh, fungus gnats present. If we look at a trial here between the begonia and the zinnia, uh, the fungus gnat, uh, we see at day 35 for the begonia, there was a 27% 20 20 uh, reduction in, in fungus gnats for the zinnia, we see a 29% reduction at day 35 in um, fungus gnats for the products with the, uh, the biofungicide and the, the mycorrhizae combined. Now, this is not something that's going to eliminate or eradicate. Uh, remember that these are biological, so there's always um, you know, some challenges with environment. So some environments can favor them, some uh, may not favor it. Um, so in a case where you know, fungus gnats or, or thrips may be uh, a very, very high uh, counts very high amounts that it sometimes will require a chemical control. But this offers, you know, another option for growers um, in their tool bag to you, to address uh, both the uh, uh, pathogen part for, you know, the root pathogens that could attack the plants, but also in suppressing some of the uh, insects that come along um, during the growth cycle. So here we see another one with begonias and, and zinnia. This is for the thrip counts. So again, uh, this is at day 28 uh, for the first one with begonia. We saw a 29% reduction of thrips. And with the zinnia at day 21, there's a 15% uh, reduction in, in thrips. So just to summarize some of the advantage of it, when it's um, the big, the biggest thing is that it's already incorporated into the Promix Growing Media product. So prior to planting, so it's not something you have to add. It's already it's already in there. So um, it gives an enhanced plant growth and better quality plants. Um, there's also the reduced instance of root diseases, as I mentioned, Fusarium, Pythium, and Rhizoctonia. Uh, we know that there's also reduced applications of fungicides. So we know um, in many cases where growers have long-term crops like you know, poinsettia or something where it's, um, you know, uh, several month production, um, this can be used and reduce the uh, the fungicide applications um, where there may be two or three, you can maybe reduce it to, to one. So it's a, it becomes a savings uh, for that type of those crops. Uh, short term crops, you may not need to apply, um, but always need to scout and be sure that your, your plants aren't uh, being attacked by anything. There's also the reduced insects, as I mentioned, the fungus gnats and thrips, um, but there's also if using less applications of chemicals, um, there's also the reduced labor to apply that. No one really likes suiting up, especially in the summer months and applying chemicals. So um, I can appreciate that because I used to do that myself. So um, that's something that uh, that's a benefit and an advantage for the product. And one of the other benefits, um, these uh, active ingredients benefit the crops throughout their life cycle. So even though um, you may be using them in the greenhouse or nursery, they're also uh, providing some benefits for the consumer as well. So if you're growing a plant and it has the mycorrhizae attached to the root system, when a consumer buys that you know plant and, and puts it into the ground or plants it into their planter, these uh, active ingredients uh, remain with that plant uh, on the root system. So it does offer some benefits for the consumers as well. So I went kind of fast because we start a little bit later, um, but I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, if any, anyone has any questions. So the first question we have is, how do mycorrhizae and bacillus complement each other? Um, that, that's part of the challenge. When um, we spent, um, say initially, we, we did a lot of research in mycorrhizae. We work with USDA. Uh, we work with different universities. And, you know, as explained in the, in the previous session, um, mycorrhizae are, are particular. Unlike other, you know, fungi, it is a symbiont and it requires a host plant. And uh, finding how it works and what it does. Um, I mean, I've attended a lot of the uh, um, uh, seminars and, and work groups for mycorrhizae over the years. And you know, we have a staff of people that worked in mycorrhizae in, in our research and development. And the challenge always is trying to get something um, that is compatible. Uh, as, as explained in, in the, uh, um, the previous session, mycorrhizae in mineral soil can um, uh, can be um, you know consumed by other microbes in soil. So you need something that's going to work well. What I always I always say is they need to dance together well. And while we, we initially uh, introduced the biofungicide, it was a bacillus subtilis. It was a different uh, uh, different strain. And that um, 
by the way, was is it's a very uh, uh, vigorous species that we had. And that one was uh, quite a challenge to have that work with mycorrhizae. So we had to go around and look and select uh, a number of different types of bacillus that would work um, in the way to provide the bio, biofungicide effect to suppress the, those plant pathogens, but also would work well with mycorrhizae. And that's that was part of the biggest challenge we had in, in research and development, trying to find that and took some years to do that. Because naturally, you know, we introduced the mycorrhizae first and then we came out with biofungicide. And, and then a lot of our, you know, customers are saying, well, when are you gonna have them both together? Eh, it's not that easy to do that. It's a little bit of a challenge, but that's um, something we worked on over the years. And that's, we, as you can see, the, the isolates, it's PTB 180. You know, there's, there's probably 179, 178. There's a whole bunch more before that. So it took a lot of time to find the right isolates that would work together well and still perform the way we wanted to. Okay, great. Thank you. And so ProMix biofungicide plus mycorrhizae formulations are registered for the suppression of which root pathogens? Um, we're actually listed for Fusarium, uh, Pythium, and Rhizoctonia. Also, um, there's Aspergillus listed on it, but we generally don't um, promote the one for Aspergillus. It is listed on the, uh, the label as well. But those okay. are the three primary ones we, we touch on, those species. Okay, great. Thank you. And so the, uh, the ProMix biofungicide plus mycorrhizae formulations, are those registered for the suppression of any insect pests? Um, these we listed as suppression because again they're biologicals. Unlike you know um, chemical treatments, you're you're trying to eradicate something. You you identify a problem and you spray and spray and spray until a drench until you kill something. Um, pa with the um, biologicals, you know they have to interact and you know if there's a, an environment that's conducive to, to encourage the growth of pathogens, well, they can over be overcome at some point. So, um, but the trick is if you start early and when you first transplant, and that's one of the keys here by having it in the product, it's when you first transplant and put those plants in there, the mycorrhizae colonize with, with the new plants, the new root systems that are developing or seeds that are, are, that are anything that's being transplanted or cuttings. And the, the biofungicide is also there too. It actually, the biofungicide colonizes plants within 48 hours. Mycorrhizae take a little bit longer. It could be two to three weeks, depending on the species. Some are faster than others. So um, that's always the challenge. So if you, it's it's about the, the, the host, the plant, it's about the pathogen, it's about the environment. And then if you have the the active ingredient or, or you know, the, the beneficial, it, if there's a, a condition where it can be overpowered, it's not going to stop everything. And you need to come back in with some type of chemical control. But this is in, in really severe cases. Um, if you have a plant that's been infected with something and try to plant it in, it's not gonna remedy it or cure that plant. It's not curative. These are, these are preventative. Great, well, thank you so much for joining us today, Ed. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having us here. Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, you, you can go to our website as well. We have a lot of really good information on there. Or you can contact me um, uh, at my email address. It's bloe at premiertech.com. Thank you.